Esta es una historia de canibalismo. Is it carne or is it carnage? Uh, 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 uh. This is the story about a friend from above. And every Sunday morning she would light up the fire. She gather all of us around a sample of meat. La Baba Cola de las Barbies was a cannibal tree. Well, good afternoon to the inaugural Barcelona Barbecue Podcast uh, and video interviews. Uh, this is Brian Heinen, the founder of Barcelona Barbecue, uh, that is being sh hosted on the Grid BCN Multimedia Network uh, with Katrina, Hello, who's Brian. with us today. How are you? I'm very good, Brian. It's good to see you as always. Well, it's nice to be hosted by Barcelona Barbecue. <laughs> Thank you for, uh, for hosting us as well. Um, <laughs> Now, Katrina and I have been doing uh, different shows. Uh, she hosts weekly radio and podcast shows uh, for several years now. Yeah, and, uh, we're talking almost three. Three years now. Yeah. And uh, is offered to produce and co-host uh, our Barcelona Barbecue podcast. And today, we have the great honor of being with one of my uh, friend, old friends, Buster Turner, that's uh, started up the Rooftop Smokehouse, what, about two, two three years ago, 2014, no? Yeah, around two years ago now, yeah. 2014. Yeah, yeah. And we are on location at his central kitchen. So uh, we're going to talk about this a little bit today. But now you have three locations, no? You have the rooftop smokehouse that, that you started at in San Antonio. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you opened this this year with your wife, no? Carla and your business partner, yeah. Jacob, no? Yeah, well, actually, originally it was our house was the central kitchen. But that doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> For very long, so this became the central kitchen. Yeah. When I interviewed you, yeah, you, you were doing it on your roof, Terrence, weren't you? I think we, from then we moved into the back of an art gallery after we just got arrested, where they had like a bit of a better dom domestic kitchen step up, La Plataforma, and probably not. Yes. They like took us in. We were like homeless. <laughs> oh, I see. Oh, yeah. So the neighbours didn't like you for the for the smoking. No, understandably, after a year of your clothes smelling like smoke, you're like, fair enough. <laughs> okay, so I want to hear about this uh, smoking process, but we're going to learn about it later. And you, you guys have also started another uh, project, uh, which is very exciting, with the pastrami bar in the Bourne. I'm very excited about this, eh? Yeah. Quality smoked pastrami sandwich. Love yeah. nice. pastrami sandwiches. Yeah, I mean, we've actually never, I've never been to New York where they, you know, it's considered the best. A delicatessen to yeah. New York, yeah. We try our best to make it authentic and do it properly. Nice. Uh, with our own touch. But, yeah. It's quite good. And it's very unique, the whole situation, because in the back, you go through the, the freezer, the walk-in, yeah. and you're at a cocktail bar where you also smoke some of your drinks, no? Yeah, and we have a great bartender there, Yakumo, and he's, he's amazing, and he takes care of the, the cocktails there, and he does all kinds of magical things. Yeah, you said there's what, there's a couple of them that, uh, that, that own the Paradiso Bar with you, right? That yeah. They come from... Uh... Giacomo's a cocktail maker, and then uh -huh. Enrique and Lito are the visionaries, and they're really amazing. Ha guys. Have you been by this place? I have, yeah, no, I went uh, about three weeks ago. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Do you like it? I loved it. Oh, good. Well, I mean, the wood is, is very different, isn't it? The yeah. quality of the... The furnishings. Oh uh, yeah, no, it's all very different. It yeah. is very, it's very pretty, huh? The inside, the wood. Like well, a, it it's like a barrel. Like, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That I was gonna say. And then you've got a, a secret behind the scenes going on. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Welcome. And our, and our last Hello. member of a group today, Danny, Danny Lippitt. Hello, Danny. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, you got. Think about Sit down here. All right. I can hear you have a good bo voice. You know Danny. nothing about barbecue. <laughs> I know about singing. That's. that's <laughs> uh, Danny is uh, well. He's got a list of projects that I could read off about Danny. Uh, Danny is a songwriter, singer, band leader. I like to call him a baritone voice orgasm. Mm. Uh, <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, all around good guy. Mm. Don't forget tax avoider. Tax avoider, yeah, I just saw that too. Huh? Uh, also, Danny and his project, uh, The Brass Tards, uh, uh -huh. wrote a great song called nice. Barbecue that we are now adopted as our theme song. So you heard that at the beginning of the show. Yeah, I'm glad you like it. Yeah. I'm glad you like it. Yeah. Danny, what else? You, you, uh, you work with four or five different bands now. Yeah, I work with a bunch of bands. Uh, I've been doing music in Barcelona for almost 15 years now. So, Brasturns is a band that just came out a couple of years ago, and that's the, the theme song. 
Mm -hmm. And I also love to eat. Yes. And, and I'm very happy about the latest uh, uh, explosion of pastrami on the Barcelona scene. <laughs> that's, a, that's a big thing for me because it's been a, a lot of years I've been waiting for that too. Uh, so yeah. I, I don't think I've tried yours yet though. Danny's from, uh, originally from Georgia, mm -hmm. via Narlands. See, I, I learned how to say that for a while. Narlands, harmonica player. That's where you got the voice. You didn't used to have this, this salty <laughs> voice. Like this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I lived in New Orleans about eight years. How was that? It was beautiful. It's great, great food, too. Uh, the, the food is... And a wonderful amazing. music scene. The music scene is, is second to none. It's, it's the birthplace of jazz and blues, and so you've got that whole tradition there. And the two things people like to do most there is listen to music and eat. Eat good food. Yeah. yeah. Eat good barbecue. We got a nice mix there of the, the French cuisine with the... So why did you leave, Danny? Uh, it was too much temptation for me there. Yeah? I had to go. I had to take myself by the scruff of my neck and pull myself out of New Orleans, yes. And, was... and bring yourself to Barcelona. Yes. I spent one year in, uh, in Colorado, in Boulder, cleaning up my act a little bit. And then... I yeah, because uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> well, for me, Barcelona is a, a big step down, eh? right. the, the party scene and stuff, even though it's, it's pretty but, crazy. But, but there's a big drinking scene going on here. here. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but nothing compared to New Orleans. Speaking of, you want yeah. a beer? Sure, man. I'll yeah, it's yeah. Barcelona beer. Yeah. You, you, you want a beer? Is that what we're drinking today? Well, we are. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. Jeez. Listen, why don't, uh, we're going to talk some more to Danny and to uh, Buster, but why don't we go take a look at uh, what you do here and uh, drink a beer. And yeah. while we're at it, we're going to listen to another one of uh, your songs, all right, Dan? Okay, yeah. sounds good. So, cool. so right. tell, me, tell me about this song. Okay, that's from way back, what we do with the Gangsters of Love. It's kind of my philosophy in life, which is, it's all relative. It's the same old thing, no more to say We all make decisions each and every day Fly by the seat of our second-hand pants Trying to convince why we meant some dance But don't pretend you got it Plan to the end, well that would mean you lack a fundamental knack for spontaneity. Well, Einstein said all lines will meet when the day will. It's more than a theory, it's conquering fear will be more or relative. It is an Argo. Oh, it is an Argo. It's a Rayburn from the Argo family. Okay. The Rayburn was designed after the Argo to heat your house whilst you're cooking and burning your wood. It would heat the water, that would heat your radiators, you cook on top of it, dry your clothes, sit on top of it. A sustainable oven. It's amazing. It's like the heart of all country houses. It's a gorgeous. Everything. How old is it? I think this was in the 50s as well. 50s. Okay. And it's been given a paint job and fixed up a bit since then, but it's, you know, it's old. Did you find it here? Or? No, we found it in like Northern Ireland. Amazing. It's like half a ton shipped it over. Yeah, this oh, was wow. our original setup. Yeah. We were just we burning so tube, wine barrel, pretty crude, but worked really well. Yeah. So we wanted to keep the same technique. What most people do when they smoke food is buy a very fancy, you know, electric deep, 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 and then you come back 10 days, uh, you know, 10 hours later and it's all. It's, I mean, yeah. first of all, it doesn't ever taste as good because right. you burn uh, wood sawdust and, uh, and you, you smolder it. 
when you burn wood at mm -hmm. around 400 degrees, you extract, you extract all the good flavours from wood. All the, you burn all the good gases. If you do it too soft, you don't extract the best ones. If you burn it too high, it doesn't it burn it away. So with this, we can control really the the best flavor, extract the best flavors of the wood. What type of wood are you using? Are you using uh, oak mostly, or do you use alder? Or? We use all kinds of woods, and I'm not going to pretend and say like, oh, hickory and yeah, all the, you know what people say. You know, this is the best for this. Peat moss and to be honest, it's a bit bullshit, really. Like, yeah. Can I swear? So don't worry about it. <laughs> It'll get dirty later. Um, so I have such a um, and it's been dried for about two years. With this, I, we direct the smoke into the barrel, into the chamber, or out through the chimney. So no, you I use the chimney the outside. Yeah, yeah, it smoke. The old industrial, smoke. like hundred-year-old. Yeah, yeah. Wow, yeah. beautiful. Okay. So. So we'll get it going. This way we can really extract the best flavor from the wood by burning it in whole logs. You went to Hoffman, right? Yeah. yeah. Which is an amazing school and, and it was, I, had, I learned a lot. And then after learning the classic ways of cooking, and, and it's a great way, of, don't get me wrong, but we, I wanted to learn about beer making, fermenting, pickling, smoking. Home style. And, and got into it and we just, you know, couldn't find anywhere to learn, so we just did it ourselves. And that was with your business partner, as as well as your wife, the, the, the Austrian guy. Who's yeah, Tyrolean yeah. guy, yeah. He's now up in Falfurken, like the best restaurant in, for me, the world, like amazing. And he's like smashing out there, which is great. And before we forget, you have another new project that started last week, no? You're a new father. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which one? Yeah. Which one? Congratulations. He travels down through those tubes into the smoker and because we started smoking on our terrace we used the direction of the wind to control the airflow which is not perfect to create the same system that we did on the terrace on the rooftop the original rooftop is the same thing we have a birthplace we burn the wood and a smoke chamber but instead the tube doesn't go directly below it it travels around it and we don't have wind from the outside to work with so we have this fan that draws air around the circuit so with this, we control the velocity of the, of the fan. We control the temperature of the smoke, the density of the smoke, which is really important, and the humidity. With those three things, you can, you can be very precise with how we smoke mm. our food, cold smoke or hot smoke or mm. whatever you want to do. Yeah, do you do anything to prepare the, the bacon before? Yeah, yeah, it's in, the, it's in, a, it's in the brine. It's right? in a rub, like a really nice rub. So what have you added here? This is salt, sugar, uh, black pepper, um, a bit of fennel a bit of juniper, a bit of bay leaf. It's uh, drawing moisture out of the meat. Mm -hmm. this, is the, this is the meat, so we, we apply a dry cure and then we throw that away, we tip it out and then we apply a, a, the cure again to a, a bit of dry cure. So we do that every five days. And the ultimate goal is to lose about 25% of its original weight. Wow. And then you have a cured, okay. cured product that has a longer right. shelf life. And your wife Carla is from here. Yeah, yeah. She's from, uh, she's from Yeda. Yeda. And she's now into it just as much as you know, or? Yeah, she is. Without her, there would be no rooftop. Nice. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> so this is pancetta, what people consider bacon here. This is English bacon. It's, it's the ribs and the, and the lomo. This continued, yeah. it would reach the ribs and the, and the lomo. That's the difference between English bacon and, and, and you know, pancetta. Okay. We like to sell to people who really take care of the stuff. So this bacon is actually for chuvos. Well, they, okay. they make a really great hamburger and then they use our smoked bacon in, the, in their hamburger. And they nice. use uh, picanha in their hamburger. That's the key. It's a Brazilian cut of meat. It's like the rump cap, if you will, of the cow. So they grind that up. This is the most ancient way of preparing. Conserving food. Conserving food. Because it would be in where they have a fire, they hang their meat off at the top to preserve it for longer. So they do do your hunt, but you can't eat all that meat in one go. Mm -hmm. So you, it would be a way of preserving. Okay, I'm gonna open. To get yeah. It. So now you see the. Wow! Smell that. So we're gonna cold smoke this bacon, Amazing. and we're gonna do it for about ten days. So it's gonna go in and out of the smoker. Um, and at the same time, it's losing moisture every day. Why do you have to take it out? Um, one is that we smoke around 25 degrees, the baking, which is a cold smoke, and then you can't leave uh, meat too long at that temperature. 
So we put it then back in the fridge, and, and, and in the fridge it's a dry, it's, it's a dry uh, environment for it, so it loses moisture, and then it becomes cured and more bacon you like. And that's just bacon, but there's a million ways of doing this. You know, in America, it, barbecue is considered smoking, mm -hmm. and here we consider barbecue just cooking directly on coals. Everyone has a, a very their own ways of doing things. Okay. We're gonna try a few of these things and let's talk a little bit more now. Okay. Yeah. Woman must be sitting around the barbecue sometimes. She lose her head. She disappeared. I was coming back to the Which project is that? That's Godhead Crown. Godhead Crown by uh, Coyote and the Lip. Coyote and the Lip. Yeah, me and uh, Mark Curcio. Exactly. I'm, I'm looking forward to your next uh, gig, Danny. Okay, when, I'll, when, I'll, yeah. When is it? Uh, let's see, well tomorrow night I'm playing in Mutis, but that's the down low and that's like a cover. We do covers and stuff like that, but okay. it's still very good. Upstairs. Mutis Club, oh, yeah, yeah, it nice. starts at midnight. Where is Mutis again? It's on uh, Diagonal with Pau Claris. There's Bar Mut. Ah. And then upstairs they have the secret club, yes. which is Mutus. You're up there. So we're playing there. And then the next week's, uh, I've got good stuff coming up. With Coyote and the Lip, we're playing with Rachel Arieff and the anti karaoke Yes. Right? So that's going to be really cool. I think that's the 11th. And then on the 12th, I'm also playing with Coyote and the Lip down in uh, Barceloneta in K-Bar. It's called K-Bar and it's in the plaza of the Mercado. Great. So, and I'm looking forward to the 12th, no, at the Brass Star. The same day as our the theme song. Exactly. Come on. We're going to be in Hospitalet at the Fiesta de Diversitat. In uh, Hospitalet, uh, and that's going to be kind of around 8, 8 to 10, something like that, we're going to be playing. Guys, if you haven't heard these, check them out. Uh, we'll put uh, on our website a link to all the different projects and, uh, and Danny's schedule to go check them out. And also, our theme song, yeah. Yeah. Barbecue. All right. All right. Oh, I'm so, so excited right now. Huh? So what are we trying here? We're trying the bacon and? Uh, no, bacon, we're trying smoked duck. Okay. Um, which has been like acorn fed, ridiculously nice duck. This is some beetroot chutney, that goes nice for the duck. Mm -hmm. um, we make our own beer mustard, which yeah. is this. Nice. Okay. Um, and that goes nice with pastrami. Okay. Um, and then we have some, just some really good cheddar cheese. Which Very good. Which we make Welsh with. Okay. You know Welsh rabbit? You know yeah, Welsh I know Welsh rabbit. Not There's many people know Welsh rabbit. You know oh, Welsh I've rabbit? heard of Welsh rabbit, yeah. Yeah, so what is Welsh rabbit? Explain. Um, you get like, should be good cheese, which this is, it's like, I mean, I'll show you the thing, it's ridiculous. Okay. Uh, um, you get cheddar cheese and then you mix it with Guinness, melt it with Guinness nice. uh, and uh, butter mm. and then it turns into a roux wow. and then you put it on toast and you burn it and it's just delicious. Mm. But the, the important thing is really good cheddar, which okay. we import from Neil's yard from in London and nice. bring it over, which is wow. real good. But your meats you, you, you get here locally, no? The meats, yeah, this is um, Berdega. This too is in a, a really good area where they, they eat really well. Um, uh, Really good, really good beef. I, I, I always visit the farms before I buy the meat, and I've seen some horrific for, things. For quality. Yeah. And just everything, you know, mm -hmm. like, uh, it's not so important to me the organic stamp, because actually a lot of organic stuff is business run stuff, and it's not actually, it means it's good quality or ethical. Mm -hmm. So we try to work with more of a slow food philosophy and take care of local uh, ethical produce and it's important to check it out ourselves. So okay. Yeah. And, and the fact that, so, sorry, I can't do it. And, and this, what's this? This is smoked mackerel. Okay, very nice. With the beetroots, caper salad, and uh, some uh, horseradish mustard cream. Horseradish, I'm forgetting the horseradish. Oh, okay. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll and some smoked butter. Okay, and where are the smoked insects? Insects? Yeah, but do, no. you not, do you not do smoked insects? No. I think you should try it. Yeah? Yeah, it's the future uh, of, uh, of sustainable eating. I just, I just watched a really amazing thing about uh, Brazil, Brazilian ants. Uh, this Dom restaurant, one of the best in the world. And they, they, they eat, they use ants in a, in a sauce full of like, they taste like lemongrass and zesty and amazing, he was saying. Um, I just ate uh, termites when I was down in Costa Rica. Yeah, how were they? But they, they were good, they had like a little, they had an interesting flavor actually. Yeah, mm -hmm. like Stuck the finger in it. Yeah, yeah. I think rooftop needs to investigate. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I mean, <laughs> there you go. Insects. The next, the next. Ne next on do, the menu. Do, do we need to use a fork? Or no. Can we get in with no. our fingers? No, I, I am. I am all about. Okay. Yeah, let me grab can some we... horseradish for the macro. Okay. You try this. Wow. We need some. We need some smoked beers oh, to go with it, don't we? We have got beers, but oh, yeah. smoked beers. That's very nice. Yeah. Mm. Oh, that is so good, guys. Not too mm. salty. If you're not looking. This smoked duck 
is so tender. <laughs> mm, delicious. It's so nice. Try the pastrami. It's delicious. Yeah, have you had a pastrami sandwich at the uh, party? I haven't, I haven't been to this place. No. So I have to go. Is it mm. proper rye bread there? Exactly. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, the real thing. Yeah, the, the one thing I like with pastrami is um, the gherkin. Okay. Uh huh. Well, kind you, of. You know, American style sandwiches, there's almost always a pickle on there somewhere. Do you serve all of this at all of your, at the pastrami bar as yeah. well? Yeah, yeah, so you can find all this at the pastrami bar down at the barn. Yeah, absolutely. Now, let me ask you guys, since, I mean, none of us were, let's say, born and raised here. Um, the quality of the products and what's available, mm -hmm. compared, I mean, New Orleans, mm -hmm. it's got some of my favorite style of barbecue and food possible. I mean, do you think that, cheese. I'm not going to say compare, because I don't want to compare, but mm -hmm. The quality of the products, the, the, the possibilities, I mean, here it's Well, for example, I mean, burgers first made the big appearance, like, I would say five years ago in Barcelona. Right. They really started trying to do burgers. And today, I can name two or three pretty good quality burgers that mm -hmm. are comparable. Yeah. The, this type of barbecue and smoking, I think we're just getting started, no? Yeah. And it's very, this is more of a Nordic thing, uh, mm -hmm. influence and... Mm. It's, it's, you know, it ranges, it's such a different, it's such a broad spectrum of ways to barbecue. And right. And I think yeah, with burgers is the obvious choice. Yeah. But uh, yeah, there's so much. You, there's so much. Put so many possibilities. So the future is great. Huh? Hey, really thank good. you. Really thank good. Thank you so much. Well, you've got it's, to eat it's not too salty. That's no. what I like. It's not too salty, but it's the right salty. The future of smoking is growing. I mean, like more people are doing it, or. I mean, definitely, it's taken off all around the world. Just Barcelona is kind of always a little bit late to catch up on things, you know. Uh, you know, all of a sudden, mustaches were ch trendy now, but come on, that's uh, so five years ago. <laughs> no, right. So, no, but like, not, it, and then when it does it, it does it, it, go, it goes goes for it, you know? Like, Barcelona's always kind of like, like, uh, once it adopts it, it goes, oh. it kind of go, goes for it almost too much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, like you were talking about the food trucks, they sure. really, they really uh, over, over, slightly overdid it, didn't they, on the food trucks? A little bit, uh, yeah. Exactly, yeah, with gin tonics. Gin tonics, and then what's the next fad, then, you know? Yeah. I think the next fad is yeah. cachaça. Yeah. Okay. So I've brought out my uh, homemade, let's say home-aged cachaça. So I take a regular clear cachaça, uh, and I add it to a oak barrel for nine months. That's... Uh, that's also been, let's say, smoked on the inside, as we talked about earlier. So it gives it this nice, dark color. And there's a video on our website. I'll put a link on the, on the blog page about how we made this. But I wanted you guys to, uh, to try some of this to go along with the smoked meats. OK. See that color? You can also see well, at the bottom, see this is remembrance from the inside of the uh, oak barrels. Mm -hmm. Penedez. So this is one of my nine months, our so last sure? batch. <laughs> Wow, well, we can. We have more glasses from our last batch, and uh, now we're doing a 70-liter batch mm. of it's really good. Wow. of cachaça. Yeah. Mm. Wow, you might as well finish that one, buddy. Um, <laughs> Danny's a professional. Yeah, yeah, it's coming. It's coming. There's more. There's more. There's more over that game from. And then try it with like some of the the meat. Oh my god, that's delicious. Ah, uh, it is nice, huh? That gets straight to the to the throat, doesn't it? Mm. You can feel it. Yeah, it's like the rum without the, the sweetness. It's got that edge. It's that kick. Buster, what's the what's the future for you? More kids? <laughs> <laughs> You're done now. Yeah. No, no I'm right. <laughs> no, but the, you have the restaurant going. Mm. You're you're planning on doing more of the pop-ups here at the central kitchen, or yeah. Um, you were telling us off camera a little bit that you 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 want to do the more frequently, right? Yeah, I mean, it's. Uh, and the, there's so much that I want to do. It's actually uh, one step at a time. It, it, yeah, it's a bit, uh, I get either I get really frustrated. So just there's so many ideas. I just don't have the time. But um, when we, we we do when we do our dinners or lunches here, it's a real beautiful thing because it's a love. I mean, actually, you can see the chimney probably smoking now. But people come in, they see the chimney smoking. Come sit down and they, you know. You just put a sign out on the, the street? Or no, I, you have to pre book. You have to pre book. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, because I mean, it's not really like a restaurant right. and we prepare food especially for that day. But yeah. it's, it's, it's just a real nice way to cook and it's that balance between having a, a <coughs> restaurant for a day, which is really fun and lovely, and then uh, doing the, the um, food trucks 
or selling produce or the pastrami bar or food truck events mm -hmm. they're so they're everywhere but i really like the the eat streets the van vans right. the, the, all those where they care about, about the produce the and, and the quality okay. where, where, where rather it's just a massive thing and the food trucks a gimmick uh for drunk people to kind of like be satisfied so, so we, we have a tweet here from nuria uh how do we Find out where to sign up for one of your pop-ups. Huh? Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah just I'm paraphrasing, but more or less, that's what <laughs> she's saying. Yeah. I mean, just give us a call or send us an email on yeah. Rooftop Smokehouse. Uh, what is it? It's Rooftop Smokehouse. At gmail.com. And uh, the website is RooftopSmokehouse.com. Yep. Yeah. And, just, uh, and you're on Facebook area. and. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty. It's just me and. Of, like mm. to get hold of, so just give us a call and we'll get in touch. And, okay, so it's yeah. very it's very personal. Yeah, 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 yeah. and and the whole experience. Office. And yeah. and thank you for that. <laughs> thank you, Buster and Brian. Um, yeah. We'll be doing more Barcelona barbecue podcasts. Anytime you want to invite me to eat stuff, Danny, yeah. you you can be our guest any day. There you go. <laughs> nice, I love it. It's exactly. So we we are on Instagram, Snapchat, Pinterest, uh, Facebook. It's Barcelona BBQ. The letters BBQ. Uh, the website, the blog is barcelonabbq.com. Uh, we're always updating with blog posts and video posts and podcasts now, yes. Uh, live music, we have uh, our own sampling of our barbecue uh, playlist of local musicians and some of our favorite musicians, uh, which of course some of Danny the Lips. I didn't even say that yet, Danny the Lip. That's my name. Yeah. Lipton. That's my name. Uh, and your website as well, no? Danny the lip dot com. Dot com. Yes. Great name, Danny. Thank yeah, you. Man. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, Danny, there's one thing I have to embarrass you before I go. You uh -oh. you uh -oh. you did a little voiceover work in the States, <laughs> no? <laughs> you guys know the Corte Inglés commercial? Right? No, no, no. I'm talking about the oh, one in the about States. The Doers Whiskey one. The Doers oh, Whiskey. If you ones, let's hear it. Oh, oh, I, well, I did one for Corte Inglés here also in Spanish, but in like broken Spanish. Okay. But I also did the Doers Whiskey campaign. That's I'm proud of uh, being associated with any whiskey, yeah, yeah. except Jack Daniels. Jack Daniels is uh, our sponsor of the program. Oh, today. Yeah. <laughs> I love Jack Daniels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, please reach out. We'll be doing these monthly at least. Also, make sure you check out the Grid BCN Multimedia Network as they do their podcasts, uh, the On The Grid podcast. And, yes, well, and, and featuring, uh, you know, barbecues and, uh, you know, other gastronomy on the grid. And so. I'd just like to say that Buster is digging into his own food, which is <laughs> a clear evidence that it's good. <laughs> yeah. Because he has eaten his own food, yes. Slinking around the bars and just a giggling all the time. Little dolls of fantasy just so submissive and fine. But our friend, she had a plan for